to Minneapolis, where we're joined by Tito Wilson. He was a witness to the fatal police shooting of Jamar Clark back in 2015 and has since remained vocal about police. And thank you so much, sir, for joining us on the program. First off, I want to get your thoughts on the decision made not supporting the proposal of replacing the police department. Yep. Uh, well, good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, so a lot of people here in, in, in Minneapolis, particularly North Minneapolis, you know, we did not want to have this proposal moving forward. I mean, there was just no concrete plan and how they were going to put together this Department of Public Safety. And, you know, a lot of people felt like it was going to leave our you know, um, citizens here in the north part of Minneapolis more vulnerable to uh, the rising level of crimes. And we just weren't willing to take that chance on it. And we believe that real strong reforms with the current uh, structure that we have was a better option. Right. Um, racial injustice is rooted in U.S. history, as we know. And this has been an issue people of color have been facing for years on years. What do you think needs to be done to mitigate this problem? Oh, my God. How much time do we have for that answer? <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, racism is, is, is a man-made construct. It is not of God. And, you know, we just need to learn how to build better relationships with people, you know? I mean, my fellow neighbor, whether they're white, black, Hispanic or whatever nationality. I mean, if we could just learn to, to see each other's humanity, first see each other's humanity and our rights to live, you know, amongst one another and, and do all the things that we want to do to have successful lives, you know, recognize that first and respect that. And I think if we if those things can be put in place, then we can go a long way with, you know, kind of tamping down the temperature of racism here in this country. Right. Do you think anything has changed since the death of George Floyd? So I think I think you have a lot of people that have, you know, that were maybe not like directly involved in racist activity, you know, but some people that may have been quiet about it, they may have seen their the companies they work for or the organizations that they work for, or maybe the neighbors or friends or even family members be, you know, directly involved, you know, with racist activities. I think, mm -hmm. I think, I think George Floyd's situation, you know, allowed for the world to see, you know, that when black people talk about, you know, racist activities and things that happened to us, you know, that we, you know, we weren't just making things up. We're not just talking about things because some people like to deny that, you know, right. like it's old over, you know, we don't live in a racist country anymore. A lot of people like to say, oh, well, you know, we, we elected uh, Barack Obama, so that means that racism is gone. And that's just not true, just not true. And George Floyd's murder, you know, allowed for the world to see that, you know, it is very, very pervasive in the culture here in America. Right. Uh, Tito, before I say goodbye to you, I just want to thank you uh, for all you've done for your community. I've kind of been looking at your biography before coming on the show. Just thank you for being so kind and nice to your community.